But if we bite and devour one another, we'll soon be consumed of one another. The love that Philemon had for the saints was already well established. So Paul took great joy and consolation in it that he knew he loved the saints. Okay. Four, we have great joy in the seventh verse and consolation in thy love because thy bowels, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bounds. Now, I want you to notice this because I think it's so necessary that we as believers take a look at the approach and then utilize it for ourselves. I know myself, when people come to me, if you come to me the wrong way, it automatically uh, makes me put my guards up. But if you come with love, if you come with grace, if you come with goodness, it makes a person relax and get ready to receive what you're trying to get over to them. For love's sake, I'd rather receive Steve Paul chose. However, to base his request on love, not on commandment. Notice what he said. Yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He took two reasons why Philemon should be willing to give his request. Special consideration. First, because Paul himself, the age, was getting older. This adds a note of tenderness to the appeal because I've known you so long. Coming as it does from an old, gray-haired, battle-scarred man. Second, he mentioned that he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ, reminded Philemon that he was at that moment in prison for obedience to the law. I'm confined to a Roman prison. I'm in jail. I'm here awaiting trial. Nero's chopping block may be awaiting me, but I don't know, but I'm bound here. I'm in jail. But while I was in jail, while I was bound, my son Onesimus. Okay, what does he mean by my son? I have begotten him strongly because he loved him. He loved him as a good young Christian brother who had come to the Lord even while Paul was in bounds, confined, could not do what he wanted to do, go where he wanted to go without prisoner, without guards with him. He receives Onesimus and gives him the love of God and the grace of God and Onesimus becomes saved. Now he must send him back to the master, which is Philemon and tells Philemon to receive him. This young man, my son, all right, which makes it very personal. You are my friend and I've begotten a son which was your slave, which in times past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Unprofitable because he was always running away. He was unprofitable. But now he was controlled by Christ and he really lived up to his name. Though he introduced it in a humorous way, Paul stated here, the heart of the issue of the fact that would make it real a real test for Philemon to accept Onesimus. Onesimus had been an unprofitable servant. There's not even a hint that Philemon had mistreated his servant and provoked him into fleeing. Onesimus was the one who had been at fault. We all know that such useless people, we know somebody like that, they do as little work as they can, and what work they do, they do it carelessly and slowly. And such a person would have been a continual headache. And to top it all off, Onesimus ran away and was a complete loss to Philemon. Some suggested Onesimus even may have been stolen from his master when he ran away. He may have stolen from him. In other words, when he ran away, he took something with him that wasn't his. But now Paul asks Philemon to forget all the past cause and aggravation and states that Onesimus since has been converted and he's going to be useful to him and to Paul. That's saying a lot. Then he goes to the 12th verse and says, Look, whom I have sinned again, Thou therefore receive him that is mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bounds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that the profit, that the benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. In other words, it had to be in God's plan for the slave to escape for a season. Now I'm sending back to you. What was useless now becomes profitable. For now he's a servant of God. And being 
under your care. He can be profitable to you in the ministry. He belongs to you. The service he could render could be considered his contribution to Paul's work. Paul wanted to keep Onesimus with him, but he wouldn't do that without Philemon's knowledge and consent. Paul wanted Philemon's benefit, his favor shown to Paul to be given willingly, not out of constraint. He really wanted Philemon to know, I'm not doing this against your will, but I'm sending him back. Not now as a servant, okay? Now get this, I'm not sending him back as a servant, but above a servant. I'm elevating him because of his acceptance of Christ from a slave to a brother. Now that's a lot of nerve. And not just a brother, but a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Onesimus returned as a servant to submit himself to the will of his earthly master. But Paul urged Philemon to regard him better than a slave, to elevate him as a Christian brother. Paul loved him in this way, and Philemon would have even more reason to do so, since Onesimus was a member of his household. It would have been hard for Philemon to accept Onesimus as more than a slave if he had any prejudice toward him. As some sort of inferior person, Christians today sometimes have difficulty accepting people because of their background, their status or their appearance, race or other reasons. But God recognizes no such distinctions among persons, and neither should we. Saints must be willing to accept as brothers and sisters whoever God accepts as sons and daughters. We must learn how to accept whom God has saved. Lord, help me this, with this thing today. I'm telling you, this, this lesson comes as a blow to every prejudiced saint who feel like only certain people can be saved. God can save whoever he wants to, whenever he wants to, however he wants to. It's saying a lot. If ye have wronged thee, and look what he said. In the seventy birth, if thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. Now, if you love me as you say you do, accept this lad as you would receive me. Receive him as if you were receiving me. That's saying a lot, y'all. He made it clear that he wanted Philemon to forget wrongs that were done in the past and receive Onesimus with the greatest of joy and kindness. If he have wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that on mine account. <laughs> I remember T.L. Barrett used to preach a sermon once, lay this charge to my account. And he, I mean, he preached about Onesimus until you put yourself in that, that, that situation and you felt like, God, if, if, if anybody ever did me wrong, and I want to forgive them like, like, like Philemon did, and like Paul is requesting that Philemon do, and out of love receive them back. Put it on my account. Whatever he's done, if he owes you anything, if he stole anything when he left, put it on my account. I'll take care of it. If he did feel that Onesimus owed him something, Paul said, forgive him and the debt, lay it to me, I'll pay. Ain't that just like Jesus? Whatever we owe, Jesus paid it all. I, Paul, have written it for, with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee, how thou owest unto me, even thine own self besides. Put it on my account. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. I'm writing it with my own hand. I'm signing a promissory note to pay claims that you've got against Onesimus. And he went on to remind Philemon how much he owed to the apostle, to the apostle for bringing him the gospel and in the way, in this way, saving his soul. It was Paul's way of reminding Philemon of the principle that Jesus taught in the parable of the two depths that was recorded in Matthew, the 18th chapter. The parable teaches us that since God completely and freely forgives us, we must be willing to forgive one another. Philemon had been given, had been forgiven much. He should be willing to forgive the little that Onesimus owed him. And if he owe you anything, lay it to my account. Lay this charge, put this charge on my account. Paul made a humorous reference to Onesimus' name. Where he said, Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my vows in the Lord. The Greek verb that means to have joy or benefit is the word from which Onesimus' name is derived. If Philemon did as Paul requested, he would bring great joy to the apostle. Paul would be happy for Philemon that he had grown so much in the Lord 
that he could exercise godly love to this extent. He would be joyful for Onesimus, who would be welcomed and cared for. All of this would refresh his heart, something that he doubtless needed during his stay in prison. But Paul would not be the only one filled with joy. Onesimus obviously would be relieved and happy. Philemon himself would be joyful instead of having a heart filled with anger and resentment. The church would be joyful to welcome a new brother. A proper response to Philemon would bring gladness all around. What are you saying? We must forgive, even though it's difficult. We got to forgive as we're forgiven. Now, according to God, forgiveness is required for us to be saints. And then we got to pray for a forgiving heart. And then we've got to remember when Onesimus became a Christian, he began to live up to his name, which means profitable. Paul urged Philemon to live up to his name, which means loving. Onesimus, profitable. Philemon, loving. So when you put profit and love together, you got something going for you. By loving, forgiving, and accepting others, as Christ accepts us, we put ourselves in the mainstream to receive the blessings of God. Stand on that tomorrow when you stand before your students and before your class. Let them know that, look, everybody wants to be accepted. Can't get no help here. Everybody wants to be accepted. When a person comes to church, we are not supposed to reject them. But as Christians, as believers, we are supposed to accept them into the royal family. And thank God. I don't care if a person comes to church and they're a former prostitute, a gambler, a drug addict. Some people have problems with ex-drug addicts. Some people have problems with ex-alcoholics. Some people have problems with ex-prostitutes. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, you could be worse off than what they were. Stop pointing the finger and downing and degrading everybody and learn how to accept people for what they are and put their past in the past and leave it back there. And as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. We should not segregate ourselves in the church because you've been saved and good all your life. Just because you've been good all your life, never did no bad moral sense, you still wasn't no better than the prostitute, no better than the gambler, no better than the alcoholic. I ain't gonna get no help here, but I know I'm right about it. You were no better than the street runner because you wasn't saved. You need to accept Christ. And since you've accepted him, why look down on others and do like the fella did when he went to pray and, and looked around and said, I thank God and looked down on the sinner that I'm not like others. And then looked at him. And that fella got up there and beat his chest and just said, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said he went away more justified than the fella that came up there with all them big words talking about, I'm glad I'm not like others. Some folk get up and testify. You know, I ain't never did this and I ain't never did that. I hate to hear people get up in church and always throwing off slighting, slighting people, you know, because they didn't do no big sin. I ain't never been this and I ain't never been that. I ain't never did this and I ain't never did that. Why look down on somebody who did? God saved them just like he did you. It ain't going to be no special place in heaven for you. It's because you didn't do nothing bad like other folk did. Get yourself together and thank God. That some things you didn't have to experience. And thank God for the folk that did experience it. That God saved them in time. I wish I was in church so I could get somebody to say amen. People look down on other folk. Yeah, I never was a drinker. I never was a smoker. I never was a gambler. I never was on drugs. And all them fellas on drugs ain't got no sense. Hey, they may not have. But when the Lord saved them, they got some sense. And you, as a saint of God, as a Christian, are supposed to forgive folk. All right, somebody asked me, what do you mean by forgive and forget? How are you going to forget? What we mean in the context of forgive and forget is you forgive a person and you don't keep reminding them or bringing it up. That's what we mean by forget. You can't throw it out of your memory bank. It's in your memory bank. But it's not affecting you to the extent that you hold it against a person. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. That's it. Get it? All right, 734-4455. I'm trying to catch a cold. Low share. 734-4455 from Illinois, 933-4455 from Indiana. Give us a call if you have any 
questions about this lesson. Don't forget tomorrow we will be ministering day and night. God has given us two messages that I want to share with you on tomorrow. And God gave us that message on last Sunday, the fourth Sunday in February. Don't stop praying. I mean, God gave it to us. And uh, that was the real to real. That's why it ended abruptly like it did. It ran out. But on the actual cassette tape, it goes all the way through with the message. And I'm just about through as I'm relating to you the story of Daniel. When Daniel prayed for 21 days, fasted for 21 days. And just about the time that his strength was gone. And he didn't think that God was certain about him. God sent Gabriel, the messenger angel, to let him know. Get the tape. You'll hear it on the end. Uh, that God sent Gabriel because the devil, the prince of Persia, did not want Daniel to get the answer. That's why a lot of you all are going through now. It's not because God is not answering you. It's because the devil don't want you to get the answer. Because he knows if you get the answer, you're going to be something to deal with. Because you're going to give God more praise and more glory and more honor than you ever gave. Him. So the devil holds that back and tries to keep your answer from getting to you. So Daniel said, listen, in the book of Daniel in the 10th chapter, the prince of Persia held him back. And Gabriel had to send back to heaven to get reinforcements. And Michael, the warring angel, came to assist Gabriel in his fight against the prince of Persia. And while he was fighting, God told Gabriel, get out of here. Go down there and strengthen Daniel before he just about gives up. At the end of the 21st day, when Daniel was just about out of it, Gabriel came and refreshed him and let him know, Daniel, listen, God heard you the first day you prayed. But that old devil, that prince of Persia, stopped me. To keep you from getting the answer. But here's the answer. All is well. 734-4455 from Illinois. 933-4455 from Indiana. Our pastor Gann is in town. He's in revival over at um, Faith Temple. I believe he is. Yeah. Okay. 734-4455 from Illinois. 933-4455 from Indiana. Pastor Gann said, I love you. I got to get out of here in a little while. You know, I have really enjoyed this Saturday. It's really been wonderful sharing with you. And uh, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. I really do. I enjoy it. Meet us tomorrow at 4147 West Roosevelt. We've got a fantastic message for you. Day and night, we will be ministering. God has given us these two messages that I must share with you. I've got to because the Lord gave them to me in prayer. And I want to share them with you. So if you've got any questions about the lesson, though, you just want to tell us you enjoyed the tape. 734-4455 from Illinois. 933-4455 from Indiana. Give us a call.